This tropical disturbance is heading straight for the Caribbean and it could intensify into a tropical storm or even a hurricane as it does so. But this is only one of three tropical systems we're watching with potential for land impacts over the next several days, with a hurricane approaching Hawaii and another tropical storm bringing rain to Mexico and the southwestern U.S. In this video, I'm about to show you what's happening in the tropics and what to expect going forward. But first, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more tropical weather updates. So right now, here's the latest tropical weather outlook for the NHC. Disturbance 1, that's recently been labeled Invest 91, has a 90% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. A broad area of low pressure associated with a tropical wave is producing a concentrated but still disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms of the eastern tropical Atlantic. Environmental conditions are favorable for development of the system, and a tropical depression is likely to form by the weekend as it moves slowly west north slowly westward at 5 to 10 miles per hour across the central tropical Atlantic. And this system is likely to be near the Lesser Antilles by the middle to later part of next week, and interest there should continue to monitor its progress. The formation chance through 48 hours is around 60%. Formation chance through 7 days is high at 90%. And so this is very likely to become the next tropical depression, tropical storm, and some models even showing significant intensification, bringing it up to a hurricane, potentially even a pretty strong hurricane. The Caribbean should definitely be watching this because before it looked like it was going to be a fish storm and it was just going to turn out into the open Atlantic. But now it's looking like it's headed straight into the Caribbean, at least the northeastern part of the Caribbean, but really both the Leeward and the Windward Islands should be watching this depending on where it goes. And then after that, it could, it could end up hitting potentially Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, maybe even the Bahamas, maybe the southeastern U.S. It's too far out to say if that's going to happen, but there's a lot of places that should be watching this storm system. But here's the current satellite imagery of Invest 91, looking at a pretty compact area of low pressure, not super organized, but it's it's getting there. It's still still kind of attached to the, the intertropical convergence zone, but as it pulls off from that, it's expected to intensify pretty quickly. It's heading directly west. This is the, the most recent intensity guidance as these hurricane models are starting to come in for this invest. We're looking at it hitting the eastern Caribbean potentially in the next five to seven days. So by the middle to later part of next week, we could be looking at that. The intensity guidance is bringing this up to a tropical storm in around 48 hours. That, that could be a little quick, but we'll see. Then... They're bringing it up to a hurricane, potentially, in the next four to six days or so. It, it could even intensify into a Cat 2, Cat 3 on some of the forecast models. We'll see about that. But here's a look at the Euro ensembles. And they were showing this yesterday. They're still showing it today that, that it's pretty likely to move into the Eastern Caribbean, especially the Leeward Islands, the Eastern Caribbean, in around seven days or so kind of next Wednesday into Thursday, and then it could actually make a turn. As you notice, they're showing this high pressure of the Atlantic. That's pushing it, it west, but then notice there's an opening in here, so then that looks like it's going to allow it to potentially escape out towards Bermuda, potentially, is what a lot of the forecast models are showing, but by the time it turns, it's already hit the northeastern Caribbean. Going to mid-September, it could approach Bermuda. That's what the forecast models are showing now, but there's a, a lot of uncertainty on where this is going to go past, really past this point of around five to seven days or so. Here's the GEFS ensembles. They're showing a much weaker storm system, really a weak tropical storm moving into the Caribbean around the same time frame. But then after that, we'll have to, we'll have to see where it goes after that. Some of the ensembles are showing some more intensification and it turns and kind of follows a track similar to Hurricane Aaron. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. And then some of the ensembles are showing some other development after this storm. And yeah, if this tropical storm gets a name, the next name on the list is going to be Gabrielle. So expect to see tropical storm Gabrielle on the map within the next few days. Here's a look at the GFS model showing this tropical disturbance turning into a, a tropical depression this weekend, like the NHC was mentioning. And then the GFS model intensifies this into a pretty strong hurricane. Already by 
Tuesday, September 9th, we could be looking at a 977 millibar Category 2 hurricane in the tropical Atlantic, and it's very far south at this point, even if it starts moving to the west-northwest direction or even northwest it's still going to be hitting the Caribbean at this point. And so also you could see that there's a lot of moisture for this storm system and not too much dry air really interfering with the hurricane. You do have this very powerful high pressure system that's not going to cause a problem for tropical storm and potentially Hurricane Gabrielle. It's actually pushing it further west where it's going to end up causing impact. And then it's already down to 9 to 69 millibars when it when it actually hits the Caribbean. And then it could make a direct impact on Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, according to the GFS model, around Friday, September 12th, going to Saturday, September 13th, looking at a 967 millibar hurricane hitting the northeastern Caribbean. That's what the GFS is showing. They're also showing another tropical system behind Gabrielle. The name after Gabrielle is hum Humberto. And there is a, a strong tropical wave over Western Africa, so they're really showing a significant intensification with that one too. But then the GFS model brings Hurricane Gabrielle all the way down to a 949 millibar major hurricane by Tuesday, September 16th. And then you notice there's this big front that keeps this hurricane from going further west and impacting the east coast so then it's going to make a big turn pretty sharply to the to the north and the northeast and it could end up hitting bermuda at this point and then moves off towards atlantic canada but then notice what happens with this hurricane behind gabriel it it kind of goes north into the atlantic but then as you see all these storm systems kind of messing with the the steering patterns then this hurricane goes west and even starts moving south. That's going to be interesting. If that were to happen, which is pretty unlikely at this point, if that were to happen, that would be something pretty interesting to watch and, and could be a problem for the northeastern Caribbean if, if there's two hurricanes back-to-back uh, -back coming from two different directions. Here's a look at the Euro model. Not really showing a ton of intensification with, with Invest 91L, or future Gabrielle showing a, a tropical storm, but there's a lot more dry air. As you notice, there's a lot more dry air and even wind shear interfering with this storm system, but it still hits the Caribbean. That's the thing. It still hits the Eastern Caribbean as a weak tropical depression and then moves through the Caribbean as just some disorganized moisture going into mid-September. Then some potential weak activity behind that kind of headed in the same general direction, but the Euro model sometimes underestimates the intensity of these storms, so that's another thing to keep in mind. But there, there could be some wind shear that might cause a problem for Gabrielle and any other tropical activity. We do have this kind of upper level trough over the central Atlantic producing wind shear, but the wind shear is to the north of where our disturbance is. So if if Gabrielle is able to stay to the south of all the wind shear, it's it's going to have a good opportunity to intensify, especially if the winds to the north of the storm are providing more of an outflow instead of destructive wind shear. And it looks like that's what pretty much happens, even going into late next week, going to next weekend, as this is a very powerful hurricane in the Caribbean. We have more of an outflow pattern, so the upper-level trough out ahead of of future Hurricane Gabrielle is producing more of an outflow. So this is actually helping, not interfering with the hurricane. And then once it gets out here, it becomes pulled into a frontal system and more of an extra tropical storm once it goes up towards Atlantic Canada. Still a, a pretty powerful hurricane for a while out in the Atlantic, and then we have that storm behind it. We'll have to see what happens with that one. But some quick intensification with this invest is possible. As it goes west, it's going to be going over some very warm sea surface temperatures in the mid-80s, especially the further west it goes, the more favorable things get. And also the upper ocean heat content, not just the sea surface temperatures you know, on top, but that warm water, that fuel for the hurricanes extends down by quite a bit below the ocean surface. So that, that provides a decent supply of, of energy for the storm. So if it goes in this general area, 
It's going to be going over some upper ocean heat content, over 100 to potentially even 150 in some areas, which is a lot. And then the half say model, this is the like the first run for this invest, so it's brand new, so there's a lot that, that can change here. But they're showing within about five days by September 9th, we have a tropical storm, not showing a ton of intensification with this one so far, but still a, a, a tropical storm starting to move towards the Caribbean. At this rate, it looks like it probably would head more towards the northeastern Caribbean, not affecting some of the islands down further, but that's what the half say model is showing. We saw the ensembles and some of the different models. They're showing there's significant variability in, in how strong this is going to get and also where exactly it's going to go. People in the Caribbean should be watching this, even along the southeastern U.S., Florida. All those areas should be watching this storm system because it, it does have the potential to become something pretty significant over the next week or two. But yeah, that's what we have right now on on this tropical disturbance. Definitely something to watch going forward. And then we also have two tropical systems in the eastern Pacific, and they both have potential to impact land areas. We have Tropical Storm Lorena. Yesterday, it, was, it actually was a hurricane yesterday. I saw winds of 85 miles an hour. might have gotten higher than that at some point, but now the winds are down to 50 miles an hour. It's weakening significantly. Minimum central pressure, 996 millibars, moving northwest at 7 miles per hour. Some of the models were taking the center of Lorena directly into northwestern Mexico and the southwestern U.S. Now that's not going to happen. It's expected to just kind of stay off the coast and just dissipate, but still the moisture from it is going to be a, a pretty big deal across northwestern Mexico, and some of it could even reach the southwestern U.S. and possibly even further. Then we have Hurricane Kiko, a very powerful major hurricane, winds of 130 miles an hour, Category 4, Minimum central pressure, 951 millibars, moving west at 9 miles per hour. Here's the satellite imagery of Hurricane Kiko, just a very powerful hurricane. It's pretty compact, like an annular-type hurricane to some extent. And the NHC has key messages for Hurricane Kiko. It's expected to approach the Hawaiian Islands during the early to middle portion of next week. And there is an increasing risk of direct impacts from wind and rain, but it's too soon to to tell exactly what's going to happen. So just something to, to watch if you're in Hawaii. And here's the cone showing by around 8 a.m. Tuesday is when you can see potentially a tropical storm, Kiko, approaching Hawaii. So it will weaken down. It's not going to hit as a Cat 4 or anything like that, but potentially some impacts from a tropical storm there. Here's a look at the GFS model for Hurricane Kiko. You can see that, yeah, it's very compact, pretty powerful but small hurricane and it pretty much follows what the NHC has on the cone then you see it does start weakening down and then the GFS model carries it just a little bit north and a lot of the rain seems to miss Hawaii to the north so it it, it might not make a direct hit but the chance that it does it has gone up of course and pretty much all the ensembles bring it very close to the the Hawaiian Islands so it's definitely something to watch. At least there's going to be rain. Potentially some gusty winds are looking pretty likely on Tuesday, September 9th, going to Wednesday, September 10th. And then here's a look at Tropical Storm Lorena. Yeah, not much with this storm. It's pretty much getting sheared apart. A lot of the clouds, convection, and, and moisture with this is being being sheared off to the to the northeast. And not much left with the center. And here's... The key message is heavy rainfall associated with Lorena will continue to impact Baja, California, Sur, and Sonora, Mexico through Friday. This will increase the, life, the risk of life-threatening flash floods and mudslides across northwest Mexico. And then moisture from Lorena will contribute to heavy rain concerns across Arizona and New Mexico through Saturday. Isolated to scattered instances of flash flooding are possible across Arizona into Saturday. And then also, life-threatening surf and rip current conditions will affect portions of the southwestern and western coasts of Baja, California, Sur during the next couple of days. And even today, there's a high risk of rip currents along part of the coast of Southern California. So that just goes to show that it doesn't take like a big hurricane to cause rip currents. Even just a tropical storm with 50 mile an hour winds, you know, can cause some significant impacts. And yeah, here's the forecast cone really keeps it at a tropical storm through tonight and then by tomorrow 
weakening down to a tropical depression, and it doesn't go northeast as was previously forecasted. It actually kind of goes off to the west. I think, you know, before there, there were ensembles showing two different things. One model was showing it going northeast into the southwest, and then the other model was taking it further west off the coast and just dissipating it, and that's what's actually happening. There is a slight risk of flash flooding over parts of southeastern California, Arizona, and southwestern New Mexico, and with a marginal risk of flash flooding extending across an even bigger section of the southwestern and western U.S. And then day one through Friday morning, so this is like tonight, showing mostly over Arizona, then day two through Saturday morning shifts over to southeastern Arizona and southwestern New Mexico, and then day three, still a marginal risk for the Four Corners region and even western Texas through Sunday morning. So the, the potential there for flash flooding, there are a lot of flood watches, even some flood advisories and flood warnings in place across parts of Arizona right now. But the flood watch continues over a big section of Arizona with, with showers and thunderstorms moving in. You can see that on the forecast model we have going into tonight, some showers, showers and thunderstorms across, across southern Arizona going to New Mexico and all that moisture really getting carried off to the northeast away from Lorena. And then you can see a lot of heavy rain and intense thunderstorms over north parts of northwestern Mexico. And then all that rain keeps getting pulled off all the way into parts of southern New Mexico and reaching all the way into western Texas. And then notice what happens. That fuels some pretty strong thunderstorms that, that go all the way into even Oklahoma and after that, some of that moisture feeds all the way in to parts of the south along a frontal system. So all this moisture actually goes pretty far from Tropical Storm Lorena. Pretty interesting. So that's, that's kind of what we have happening in the tropics in terms of, of Lorena, Kiko, and also Invest 91, which will potentially become Gabrielle over the next a couple days with potential to impact the Caribbean. So that's what's happening in the tropics. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.